Hello everyone, this is Brady. Today this is a fundamental tutorial talking about this decompose text nodes. Uh, before I talk about the decompose text nodes, I would like to remind you there is also a node which is called separate text object node. Basically the usage of this node is that if you have a text object, then you need to manually select this text object. You need to assign the material or not to assign the material and then define whether you would like to take your end product as text, curve or mesh. So you can choose whatever you want. In this case, I might probably just take the text. And once you hit update, it will separate the text. So this text has been separated into T. Actually, let's enable selection. T E X T. It's basically the same as the node that you probably uh, you uh, you see earlier. Why did disable this as well? It's bas they are basically the same. You can disable. They can even overlap. But it's not really procedural. As you can see, you have to manually select your text objects every time. And also have to, if you change the anything, like I change the text to say, hello. And it does not auto update. You have to update everything. And once you do anything to your text objects, and after you updating things, you may need to redo everything again. Sometimes it's kind of very awkward. That's why this node has essentially been obsolete. We are using decompose text node instead. This node is basically a better option in most of cases. Uh, there is one kind of exception due to the font issue, but we will discuss later. Basically, this node has a very routine setup that's basically almost a kind of following a template. And let's firstly delete our old text object and so on so forth. Okay. So despite the, uh, except for this decomposed text node, there's uh, maybe four additional nodes that we need. So one thing is we select the node, hit W, goes to the data input, we need a font. And you will know why we need an additional font. And there's just three nodes at least we need. This object instancer, text object outputs, and object mat object matrix output. So we do not copy from sources. You can, but I do. I usually don't. And uh, orange to orange, character to characters, white to white, basically, and a black to black, black to black. So this is the way to set it up. Kind of very straightforward. Uh, and it says B font that is not supported, which means you need to add a font. So it goes to font, and you can choose a, whatever font. In this case, let's firstly just to choose 8 bits, and let's type in hello. Once we have done this, there are several things you need to be aware. By the way, if I do not change this font, there's nothing will be generated if the font is not being supported. Actually, the only font that's not being supported is probably the B font. So, once we have this, we have a hello that has been decomposed, but it looks kind of very weird. The reason we are having font at the most of the beginning is because we need to synchronize the font um, from the separation and the output. So, enable. So, now we have the font hello, which has been nicely separated. Actually, this is not yet perfect, but we will discuss this issue later. What this node does is basically it calculates the size of the font um, and the separates with transform. If you would like to change the alignment of this entire statement, so you just uh, hit use, goes to socket settings and alignment. Uh, you can also change the character word line spacing and include the wider space. There are many hidden options. In this case, I'm just going to hit the center. So everything has been centered. I also would like to have additional alignment. So in this case, just the horizontal alignment. Once you enable them, everything just being centered. Kind of nice. There is uh, one kind of issue that it's, uh, I, I, I think this is kind of bugs, that it's a little bit left shifted. I may report that, but it, even if this is the case, just uh, you can do a menu menu offset like uh, offset matrices. 
Just a move that a little bit manually. I think it's still kind of ideal. It's not too much weight, so I'm happy anyway. Uh, previously, we talked, we mentioned about a white space, which means hello world. So you can type the white space, and it's automatically being included unless you disable that. Otherwise, it's kind of enabled by default. Oh, actually, if we include white space, there is a word called uh, space, right? Actually, I don't know how it works. But anyway, this is basically a routine setup. At least these five nodes are really kind of routine setup that you need to follow. Otherwise, there are billions of errors that you can have. For example, if the font is not synchronized, actually it just gets completely wrong results. There's separation wrong. Or without the matrices, then you are not separating, you're just generating the same text objects at the world origin, all these kind of fonts just overlapping each other. There's, these are wrong. So you have to follow this routine. You don't necessarily need these offset matrices, but the rest is almost a must. This node does have several issues I want you to rem remember that uh, we are not separating characters. So basically each English character has occupying a single transform. So basically we're having about uh, 5 plus 5, 10 objects in total. So you, we can take a look with the viewer. So we have 10 transforms and the list length is also 10. Okay. But if we change everything by word, then we'll uh, eliminate everything into two and you have to reconnect all this kind of text. Now this time you only have two transform. One is hello, one is forward. So everything is separated by space. So these are two different kind of changes you can have. I don't know which one you want, but perhaps sometimes this is what you're looking for. There's previously in advanced, uh, in, socket, in hidden settings, we do see there is a line spacing. But the question is, I cannot directly type enter and uh, head a line space. So you might start to wonder, okay, it does not really work. How can actually this line spacing be usable? How can I actually get a space between different lines? Basically, the method that I commonly use is that I go to texture editor and add a text. So let's just call that an example. So let's type hello, space, hello word. And with the the node tree, I'm going to type text block reader. And we're going to take the example. Take the text to text. Immediately you have all this kind of space in them. And this is how it works. And you can also change that to character. Does not really affect too many things. The more important thing is the line spacing does work and it's procedural. Uh, the only thing that I want you to, the side effect of this thing uh, is that if you have, um, because this texture blocker is not part of auto execution, it's not included in tree, it's not a part of frame, it's not a part of properties. So if you just type a stuff, it does not immediately change or update your node tree. You have to either change the tree or change the property, update your frame, or just uh, manually execute the node trees. Otherwise, there's nothing will be updated. Uh, let's test a method that I didn't really try that can actually create multiple text lists. Yeah, it does not actually work. So I think this text block reader is probably the only method that you can have uh, for, lines, uh, for line spacing being useful. Uh, another thing I want to remind you is actually this font input can receive multiple inputs. So now we're using the 8-bit font, but we can create a font list. So one is to use 8-bit font. So let's choose another font, uh, and I'm going to call it normal, a mono space. So we can use the mono bold. 
So now it received multiple phones, and that's why we are seeing very weird patterns because we are having different characters having different phones. Like this one is, I think it's eight bits, and it switched to the mono phones, and then eight bit mono phones, eight bit mono phone, eight bit mono phone. That's why it looks kind of weird. It looks kind of very interesting though. Like the mixing phones, you can do a lot of crazy things with this. But uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, but it's definitely interesting. You should try that sometime. Actually, it's kind of very interesting, very interesting. Uh, there is one issue that I want to bring up is when we are calculating the spacing, there is no a perfect algorithm to calculate the spacing for certain phones. I think the 8 bit is one of them. Because you can see there is uh, some issue like a. Um, like this W and O, their spacing is a little bit larger compared to the H. Uh, there's basically this is, um, you can search for Wikipedia for more information about what's mono space form. But uh, you, what you can realize is this W is wider than the H. Which means this is not a mono space font. Different character has a different, occupy different space. So the computer gets very confused about how to actually spacing them out. Because different fonts can, can be completely different. Some font is naturally larger than the other fonts. So the computer cannot really know these kind of things. So usually the better choice is always to use the monospace font instead of other font that's not monospace. It's not a must, but you get definitely better results if you're using the monospace. So like the W is definitely the same size as the H, A and the S, um, everything just looks kind of better. Everything has been spaced um, better as well, so on so forth. So this is almost it. So for example, this is the setup that I quickly made. Then I have a cube with ori which is, whose origin is uh, basically at the, its button. And I just uh, circle instance 60 cubes, align them properly with the offset matrices, and I finally use this index mask of uh, in so that each fifth of the object will be elongated on uh, their y-axis. So we have a client of clock surfaces. There is more things that you can potentially do, materials, shadings, the clock faces, um, but, and basically the clock pointer. But this is, these are a completely different story. Uh, what I would really would like to tell you is sometimes a kind of procedural clock surface, I think it's kind of very nice. It's really, really interesting. Because otherwise, how can you actually get a model? Uh, more importantly, you can actually change all this kind of space procedurally. If you are having a a model that it has a basically a concrete model that you can only scale in up and down without customization. So this is yes, this is it's just an example. There's more things that you can potentially do, but I think I will just finish it here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll publish it next time. Bye-bye.